Hello everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. And uh, so today I'm going to be doing a video on using salt uh, to paint with. And um, you can check out my other artworks at, uh, at the Coyote Guy on Twitter if you're interested in more art like this. Um, so today I wanted to um, primarily work with salt. And if you don't know that uh, you can actually use salt to draw when you're using watercolor. Um, and what I mean by this is the salt absorbs the excess water and it creates a almost like a, a blank spot on the canvas um, where there was originally uh, pigment. So it's actually really, really cool to use for like tie dye effects, um, seashore effects, um, water effects, um, and or waves, um, you know, the crests of waves you can use salt for. Um, and you can use the salt for different patterns, like you can um, layer it in um, diagonal lines, or you can do what I like to do and just splatter it all over the painting. Um, so what I'm drawing today, and what you're, what you're seeing is actually a crystal. Uh, I love crystals, I love drawing crystals, and I thought it would be really cool to uh, use salt for this project. I don't use salt very often just because it's very messy um, and it, it, my room is still covered in salt. I have to clean up after I record this audio um, but it, it, it it's, a, it's a mess and you'll see in the video I, it's very difficult to keep in control but that's okay because the, the actual outcome is gorgeous so it's worth it. Um, on the video right now, I'm showing you my geode that I have um, and what I was using for inspiration. Um, I have a lot of crystals that I collect. Uh, I'm not a geologist, but I do appreciate me a good rock. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was using um, some of the crystals I have as reference, but I also wanted to keep it kind of a fantasy setting so I used um, a lot of different colors from my palettes um, the main crystal like the main cent central crystal I will add other crystals on the bottom and sides for the main crystal I used um, solely my um, my Kuratake Gansai Tanbi um, water palettes, and I will show those um, in the video once I uh, once I get to the painting phase. If you are interested in uh, the Kuratake Gansai Tanbi uh, paints, I did a review on them uh, in a video um, previously. And I went in uh, much more detailed. This isn't going to be a review. This video is just me using the paints. Um, the main uh, point of this video is the uh, method of using the salt. So I'm going not going to spend too much time on the actual paints that I'm going over. But I'll tell you the uh, colors. Um, they don't have names in English. So I'm just going to... Uh, tell you what they look like in person um, just because it does vary a little bit from what's on the page um, So just to talk about the drawing that I'm doing right now I'm trying to create one central geode like as if it was on display and Originally I was thinking Purple I want I wanted it to be purple. I love the color purple especially for geodes um, as you saw, my geode is purple, so I thought that was going to be really cool. Um, but unfortunately, the pigment that I was using to paint the purple, um, you'll see in later in the video, it didn't come out as vibrant as I wanted it to be. 
So I ended up switching to a more um, like bluish toned, which still came out really gorgeous. I love the end result, um, but on the video right now, I'm drawing in the crystal lattice, so the actual sides of the crystals, and the different faces are really important to get that you know crystal aesthetic. Um, and I'm also painting on some machines where I want to leave some white where I want to put in other colors, some lighter colors, maybe. Um, I also had some reference pictures up um, on my computer, it's just so I can see where, you know, how light reflects off of crystals, because it's, you know, every crystal, every crystal is different. Um, oh, so here in the video, I just got my salt shaker <laughs> uh, ready, and you can see it in the bottom right of the, the video now. I record all of... Um, my audio is separately from the video. And what you're seeing here are the three Kuretake Gansai Tombi palettes. Um, and they're all in Japanese, but what they are is there's a starry version, uh, there's a pearlescent version, and a gemstone version. And I'm going to be using all three of these palettes in this drawing today. So now that I have everything ready, I'm going to start mixing some water to clean my brush. I use the back, well, today I use the back of a um, medicine cap just because I didn't have my, I don't generally have um, any mixing pans just because they're kind of expensive sometimes and I'd rather just use stuff I have around the house. And so right now I'm painting on the main first layer. Um, and you see me grabbing the salt. I'm going to be sprinkling it. There you go. I'm sprinkling the salt onto the wet paint. It's really important that the paint is still wet when you put the salt onto it. That way it can absorb the water and the pigment around the, part, the, the spot where the salt was put on. I generally paint um, using a dry method, which is you know, brushed paper. But there is, um, this works better with wet method. So where you already wet the paper, then you take the brush and paint on top of it. As you can see in the video, the water, it's, I'm using a lot of water in this. And you can see it's kind of spreading around. Um, that's a really good sign because you're going to get uh, really good uh, gemstone effects, which you'll see in the final piece. Most of it is kind of covered up by the, uh, by the salt and just the general water. When the water isn't dried yet, it creates this kind of murky tone, which does go away once it's dried. So a lot of the color is hidden by that murkiness. Um, so I want to do the base a little bit darker. So I was trying to use the purple, but like I said, it wasn't coming out very good it wasn't very vibrant it was kind of dull and for gemstones you want you know a very vibrant color um and the pigment just wasn't there for this one um i normally don't have a problem with this purple but i think the way that this that i was using it with the salt maybe it was just something that was going wrong i'm not sure um i did later um use a different set of paints and they actually, the purples in there were uh, worked out better than the purple here. So, you know, maybe um, just the purple in, this pa in that palette that I was using is just not good for this method, but that's fine. Um, and so I'm putting some red tones in because I want there to be lots of colors in this drawing. Uh, like I said, I want it to be kind of semi-realistic, but I also, mm, I love the fantasy aesthetic the fantasy, fantasy aesthetic. Um, all my art is basically fantasy related just because I, I find that more interesting to do. Um, but you can do whatever you want with this. This, like I said, this salt method, um, is great for anything really. Uh, and you can even use it for like the sky. It can create a cool cloud effect. And there's really no limitations. I, I think it's best to just experiment. I, in the video, this is where I'm adding more of the blue tones, just because I didn't really, wasn't feeling the, the purple. Um, I, I tried adding pink 
and I do add more pink later on, but I just, I just wasn't feeling the purple, so I, it was kind of getting murky, and so I was like, okay, you know, I need to add in some blues, um, I added some more salt to that blue, um, and I think overall the effect was really cool. You can see the salt in the paint, it's going to look like the color that it's on top of because it's also not only absorbing um, the water, but it's also absorbing the, the pigment. So if you see any like weird like specks in it, that's okay. That's just the salt on top of the paint. And in the end, um, you do brush the salt off after it's dry. Uh, and that way you'll get some more of the white spots that show through, which is really cool. You can try to just paint around the spots, but personally that's really difficult, especially with watercolor. Just because the water kind of bleeds, it's harder to control um, than if you just use the salt method for the little, little specks. Um, and I'm trying to add some gold tones now because I wanted to there to be... I wanted it to look like there was gold on the inside um, that was being reflected and the outside crystal, uh, the lattice, was actually more of the pinks and the blues. I wanted the gold to be the inside area. And adding some more salt, don't mind that, um, <laughs> there was a piece of dust that fell into the paper, um, but I removed that. And you don't have to be super careful with this, I do recommend using watercolor paint. I am not using watercolor paint, um, paper, sorry, watercolor paper. I'm not using watercolor paper for this. Um, I tend to not. I, I kind of like the effect and the texture that regular paper has when put, when watercolor is put on it. It kind of ripples a little bit, and I, I actually tend to like that effect, so I don't mind. Um, but if you don't want a, that rippling effect, then I do recommend using a watercolor paper. Um, this is just in my notebook, and it's just a regular blank page notebook. Um, the, the paper is cardstock, uh, thickness, so it, it's pretty good. It's decent quality to use this on. And right now I'm trying to create what's called a cauliflower effect. And normally the, a cauliflower effect is, you try to avoid it when you're doing, um, watercolor, just because it, if you're... If you are um, painting like a person, it would be best to avoid this because it might it might look very unnatural. Um, but here, I wanted the crystal to look like it's reflecting different colors and different lights and different shades. Um, so I'm purposely trying to create the the cauliflower effect, which is when the paint has a um, hard edge to it, which looks like cauliflower. Um, I'm patting the paper dry right now because I did uh, realize there was a bit too much water and I'm trying to now get it to dry um, unsuccessfully. <laughs> I also got very lightheaded in the process. You, you saw me uh, blowing <laughs> on the paper. Um, so I, I ended up just taking a break. Um, but there'll, there'll be, you know, it'll be a seamless cut at the end. Um, but I was like, ugh, it's not going to dry. So I was like, I might as well continue adding colors. So I added some more purples. Uh, these purples, well, it was these are. I think this was from a, a pink from the Kuratake set. So I do. Tr I tried my best, and I think I succeeded to only use the Kuratake set on the main crystal. Um, I did use Artist Loft palette, um, regular. I think it's like a thirty-six palette um, on the gems that I do add into the sides. Uh, and do, don't mind my uh, glasses or the side of my head <laughs> peeping in. The setup I have, although I think better than my last videos, uh, is not the best. So, but I, I think I did a pretty good job, hopefully. Hopefully it's, you know, more viewable than the first vi couple of videos I made on YouTube. This is my, I think, my fifth video on YouTube. So I'm just getting, I'm just adding some more salt. I wanted to use the salt almost as a way to absorb the water instead of using the paper towel. I wanted the color to stay, but I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want so much water on the paper. Um, so I did add a lot of salt to try to absorb 
the excess water and it worked out pretty good I'm still just adding in some more color I thought it was looking a little bland and for a magical fantasy crystal I wanted it to look a little bit more popping you know popping but uh <laughs> it it was okay and in the final product I did end up doing a little bit of shading so that way I can make the darks darker and make the lights look a little bit uh, more, uh, you know, pop out in contrast. I was adding some more red tones again, uh, just because I wanted like it to look like there was fire inside. Um, and I do end up using a lot of gold to put in the middle. And you'll see that in a second. I'm just removing excess dust and um, trying to pick up some salt that was on the sides because uh, I didn't want to waste any more salt so I was trying to get some extra salt just on the blank parts which you can clearly see it was a it was a mess mess and a half uh, I just zoomed in because I wanted to show you the salt and the the sheen of the water um, just because I think it's really important to get like the a general idea of the texture too um, and later on I'll show you what it looks like what the gold looks like under a low light setting which is I think really gorgeous um, here I am adding in more of the gold tones. I think I do, yep, I'm trying to get the cauliflower effect to happen, which is where you just oversaturate the page with water and the, the paint spreads and then hopefully gets, um, you know, that, that, the hard edge with the lighter on the, with lighter insides. Um, and it worked okay. Sometimes it's you, you get the cauliflower better just by accident. Um, it's, it's hard to replicate because um, it's generally a mistake <laughs> that happens. But I was trying to achieve that this time. So now I'm just adding some gold highlights because I wanted to make the edges of the faces look really reflective. And I thought the gold would be really cool to try to show that. Um, and I think soon, uh, I'm just going to skip ahead to when it was done being dried. Um, and at this point it's basically done. I didn't want to do a huge amount of detail work in the background. I just wanted this to be like a, a, st a study of using salt. So I didn't want to make like a whole piece out of it, but I thought it came really cute and I do like the crystals. I... I have like so many crystals in my notebook. Um, that was me taking out my phone right now. I'm using the phone to show you the reflection, the light to show you the reflection of the gold and how glittery it is. And it's gorgeous. I, I love it. It, it looks like liquid, um, metal. I don't know how else to explain it. And now I'm trying to brush off the excess salt. It's already dried at this point. I, I had done a, a jump cut. And you can see the little tiny crystals I added around the edges, which I think are really cute. And so I'm just adding the, the light again and make it shiny. And the, you can see the Kuratake, uh, Gansai, um, Tombi, the, the palette is just creating this really beautiful shine and gleam, which I love uh, for drawing crystals. And here is the final product. I did do some outlines with the ruler just to make it pop more. And yeah, so this is the final product. And I hope you had a good time. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye.